In 2008, a mother of two from the rural side of El Salvador suffered a miscarriage. When she was rushed to seek medical help at the hospital, she was accused of getting an abortion. The police authorities were called, who handcuffed her to a bed, interrogated her, and then charged the 33-year-old mother with homicide. The mother, whose name was Manuela, was sentenced to prison for 30 years. Two years after her imprisonment, Manuela died due to lymphatic cancer. Hello, my name is Yashashri and I am going to talk about what's been happening to women in El Salvador, a small coastal nation in Central America. El Salvador has imposed a total abortion ban and in situations where the woman ends up having a miscarriage or giving birth to a stillborn, she's oftentimes apprehended for committing aggravated homicide. The draconian policy does not permit abortions even if the woman or child's life is at risk or if the pregnancy was caused due to rape or incest. On 10th and 11th of March 2021, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights did a hearing about the lawsuit that Manuela's family had filed under the claim of human rights violation. Based in Costa Rica, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights serves to protect and uphold basic human rights in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. This fight for justice has now garnered international attention and it could quite possibly determine the future of the abortion ban policy in El Salvador. The case is also termed as the Manuela versus El Salvador case. The Center for Reproductive Rights and the Feminist Collective for Local Development also argue that the state of El Salvador take responsibility for their inability in guaranteeing Manuela's right to health and life. The decision made by the Inter-American Court of Human Rights is expected to be announced in September 2021. Most countries in Central and Latin America have restrictive policies when it comes to reproductive rights of a woman, such as abortion. The tiny nation of El Salvador actually granted abortion in case of pregnancies which were results of rape or a threat to women's life before 1998. It was due to pressure from religious groups that grew into influence regarding the political decision-making processes that led El Salvador to amend its penal code. With intervention from the Catholic Church, Article 1 of the Salvadorian Constitution was revised to define that life developed at the very beginning of conception, hence imposing a complete ban on abortions. The total ban makes El Salvador one of the 24 countries around the world where getting an abortion is considered a criminalized act. Anyone involved or found responsible can face time in prison from anywhere between 2 to 8 years and in extreme cases like Manuela's, even 30 years. According to a report published by the Salvadorian Citizens Group for Decriminalizing Abortion, between 2000 and 2019, 181 women from El Salvador were convicted with either abortion or aggravated homicide related to stillbirth and miscarriages. Majority of these imprisoned women had a rural background with little to no education, often ranging from 18 years to 25 years of age. Moreover, lack of education and resources means there is no proper guidance or agency for the women to defend themselves. Paula Avila Gillen, the executive director of Women's Equality Center, which is based in New York, said, quote, What we are also seeing in El Salvador is the criminalization of women who live in poverty, unquote. Another woman who was suspected of abortion and got sentenced to prison for 30 years is Sarah Rogel. She suffered from stillbirth in 2012 and was arrested on the account of homicide when she went to the hospital. Although her sentence was shortened to 10 years after a long fight for her freedom through retrials and court appeals, Sarah was released from the women's prison on the 7th of June 2021. Paula Avila Gillen tweeted in response to Sarah's release. Sarah is free today after 10 years in prison following a medical emergency during her pregnancy that resulted in a stillbirth. She had to suffer not only with the loss of her pregnancy, but also the loss of her freedom. We won't stop fighting until all the women are free, she wrote. 
Women rights activists are fighting to seek justice for several other women who were wrongly convicted, like Sarah and Manuela. With the Green Wave abortion rights movement spreading across Latin America, some sentence rulings are being reversed. Argentina officially legalized abortion in December 2020, and Ecuador ended up lifting the abortion ban in cases which involved rape. Sara Rogel's sentence might have been shortened, but she still had to spend nine years in prison for a crime she was not guilty of. There's a long way to go, but since tides in Central and Latin America are changing, and Manuela versus the El Salvador case also holds a great potential for change in El Salvador, activists at least hope to loosen that policy in the near future. One might wonder, what does India stand on abortion policies? So now we will briefly look at India's position on abortion rights. On 25th March 2021, the Indian Ministry of Law and Justice passed the Medical Termination of Pregnancy MTP Act. This act further amended the MTP 1971 Act. Abortion was considered a crime in the country before 1971 under Section 312 of the Indian Penal Code of 1860. The MTP Act entails the time duration till when a pregnancy can be aborted, where the procedure should take place, and who can be registered to conduct the abortion. With the passing of the MTP 2021 Amendment Act, pregnancy can be terminated up until 24 weeks, but only when the woman's or child's life is at risk, or in case the pregnancy is caused due to incest or rape. Although the 24-week stretch is allowed for exceptional cases once approval is given by two registered medical practitioners only. All unwanted pregnancies, whether the reason is just contraceptive failure or the woman's mental and physical well-being, can be granted an abortion up to 20 weeks after a single doctor's approval. So, if a doctor rejects the abortion proposal, the line is drawn. For whatever reason it might be, a pregnant middle-class woman in India can't get an abortion if it's just based on her own choice. According to an interview with an obstetrician gynecologist in Ahmedabad, Gujarat, women who wanted to get an abortion varied from ages 18 to 38 and 90% of the time they were married. Moreover, the most common reasoning behind abortion among these women was that they were newlyweds and not ready for a child. On the other hand, a 2015 study in The Lancet reported that 78% of the total annual abortions in India occurred outside medical facilities. According to data collected between 2001 and 2004, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare stated that more than half of abortions in India are deemed unsafe. Women who are denied or cannot afford to get an abortion start seeking unsafe options, which is why abortion becomes one of the most common reasons for maternal mortality. Needless to say, abortion remains a stigmatized topic in India, and in many instances, women have reported being denied the medical procedure because of prejudice. It could be age, their marital status, or socioeconomic factors. The abortion law, amended as it may be, is restrictive when it concerns the woman. It is only allowed under certain circumstances when a medical practitioner approves of it.